This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. <laughs> you are divine. The universe loves you just as you are. From here, it's just a game of expansion and exploration. Valerie Atelis interviews Sarah Airy, the author of The Universe, F asterisk C-K-I-N-G Loves Me, getting out of your way and into your flow. Sarah Airy is a best-selling author, speaker, and energy mentor. She helps creative entrepreneurs get unstuck and realize their full potential so they can become the leaders they were born to be. As the president and founder of Refuture Your Life, Sarah guides clients through a unique process that enables them to let go of previously insurmountable mindset blocks, habits, and negative self-talk so they can reach new levels of success. She's known for the way she listens with love and presence, using her highly tuned intuition and this process to help dissolve barriers that have held her clients back. The foundation of her work is the trademarked refuturing process, which she created after 30 years of studying energy as a certified Reiki master and then as a certified TAT trainer. Refuturing is a powerful, gentle, and effective energy process that allows clients to create big shifts in their lives. Even years after working with Sarah, they report being more loving, confident, relaxed, creative, and successful. Sarah has worked with clients from over 40 countries, both in her private client work and in professional leadership. Today, she leads online workshops and mentoring groups in addition to her work with private clients. She is the author of the number one international best-selling book, The Universe, F asterisk C-K-I-N-G, Loves Me, Getting Out of Your Way and Into Your Flow. In it, she distills much of her knowledge in easy to understand language and stories. She shares her magic at conferences, readings, and on podcasts. One of Sarah's greatest joys is supporting people as they connect with their own inner wisdom, discover who they are in all their uniqueness, and live a life that's fulfilling and fun. Meet Sarah at refutureyourlife.com. Here's the interview with Sarah Airy. In your own words, who is Sarah Airy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a question I've never been asked. So on one level, Sarah Airy, I am just like anybody else. You know, we're all here just learning to be human, to live a fulfilling, joyful life and what it means to do that and what it takes to do that. I'm somebody who's always been interested in spirituality and consciousness, even when I didn't understand what that meant. Yeah. And then I also have this very practical side. I was also extremely good in math and thought I was mm -hmm. going to be a math major in college and studied computer programming. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so... I embrace both the very magical and woo and the very practical. When did you come to that understanding, Sarah, finding out more about yourself, this self-discovery journey? Actually, let me ask you this question. Talk to me for a moment about your healing and spiritual journey. Gosh, it started when I was just a kid. I remember being in my bedroom and feeling like I was too big for my room. Like if I opened my eyes, I would be able to 
pinch two fingers together and lift my bed. And I had a conversation with God one time where God felt very present and told me that there were things for me to do in this life. And I said, please just don't make me do it by myself. And so I always had this interest in the something more. In 1990, my aunt introduced me to Reiki. So that started me on the path of exploring energy and specifically this kind of consciousness exploration. What is God to you? What and where is God? And also, (laughs) why did you choose to use the word universe in your book, the title of your book, which is the universe, (laughs) F-U-C-K-I-N-G, loves me, getting out of your way and into your flow? To me, God is all that is. There is nothing that isn't God. And I think of the song that I learned in church as a young child that God is love. And that's what I come back to over and over. And to me, love is the force that holds everything together and that is everything. And it doesn't matter at all to me what people call that. All that is divine, God, universe, mother, father. And I use those words interchangeably. I use the word universe for the book because there's, for a lot of people, there is a lot of baggage around the word God. And I wanted something that people could come to from a lot of different backgrounds and experiences. Another question I have for you here is the purpose of life. What do you think the purpose of the human experience is? And have we chosen to be here in a human body and go through all the challenges that we have been through? Yes. (laughs) That's my short answer (laughs) to that part. Quick. (laughs) Yeah. Right. I was having a really deep spiritual experience once and sitting with the question, what is the purpose of life? And I heard this like, voice in my head saying to live <laughs> with this kind of teenage duh energy to <laughs> right, it. <laughs> right. Can't and it was both the most obvious thing and the most profound thing. Mm. Because truly we are here to live and to experience the, we can have a concept of like freedom, for example, but coming into this life and feeling bound and working through that, having that process, those experiences, the concept of freedom becomes so much better bigger and richer and deeper. And to me, that's what we're here for is to, we are already enlightened. We're here to be embodied and to have these experiences and to share and shine as our embodied selves. As you may imagine, or know, me too, that most of us have suffered a lot and we spend not most of our lives, half of our lives, in fear and all the manifestations of fears in so many. Would you say that even if we spend a moment, let's say a week, in joy, thriving in this realization of, about life and the depth of life, would you say that that was worth it, that's enough? <laughs> I'm having trouble answering that question because yeah. I don't see feeling pain as something being wrong. Mm. I believe we're here to experience the entire range. And I'm learning more and more that transformation can come through pleasure and joy. And my deepest sorrows have also been the points at which I was broken open in beautiful, expansive ways. And Though being able to be with that pain 
and not try to run away from it, not try to deny it, it helped me be embodied in deeper ways, develop more compassion for myself and others, discover who I am, and ultimately go higher and find greater joy than I felt in all the years I was trying to deny the pain and not feel it and just be light. Like (laughs) (laughs) trying to be joy (laughs) is so different from being joy. Do you think it's possible to find those deeper truths and and this pure joy without pain, without the suffering? I believe that theoretically it's possible. I know that I have had great insights that have come through joy and even what I would call ecstasy. And we seem to be wired in a way that <laughs> we mm-hmm. are kind of gravitate towards suffering sometimes. Mm-hmm. And wow. The world in which we live is not built for our enjoyment <laughs> and our oh, ecstasy. Wow. So yeah. we're being present in society as it is now can be a source of pain until we learn to transform it or we feel it enough that it naturally transforms. Right. Just by actually being a human body, that implies suffering. So if we have chosen to be here, coming from the uh, invisible world, that means that yeah, somehow we're attracted to that, consciously or unconsciously. I have another question. The warm-up question is healing. What is healing to you and what are some of the misconceptions about it? I actually have a little bit of mixed feelings about the word healing because Healing can carry with it the sense that something was wrong or that something was broken in us. I see it as we are here as a, to experience the greatness of who we are. So it's a constant process of expansion and discovery. And we learn expansion from having experienced constriction. So I talk in the book about having these, like these rings of expansion. And at some point, we will just expand to realize, oh, there are no rings. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of like in the matrix, there is no spoon. There are no rings. And it's the process that is so valuable. Otherwise, it would be like opening a mystery book and it said, the butler did it. (laughs) Yeah, Or (laughs) true. (laughs) Or getting on Mm -hmm. a roller coaster ride and sitting down and getting buckled in and they say, oh, well, this is the end point, so (laughs) you can get out now. (laughs) We're here for the experience. Uh So for me, Mm -hmm. it's not a question of healing so much as expansion and realizing who we already are and expressing that in the world. Healing to me means really deeper understanding of self, of life itself, that we are life itself. That really brings or maybe highlights the truth. And that's how we are able to expand and live in this open space. So I guess that brings me to the question of um, Reiki. That's something that I have been interested in recently only for some reason. Yeah. And I would like to say one thing more about healing. In talking about all of this as a process, I know that there was a time in my life when healing was really important to me. And I did feel broken. That is not a phase I would choose to have skipped. Mm -hmm. It was a key part of my process. And the way you use healing, you and I are totally aligned on what it means to heal. And if that word has meaning for somebody, then by all means, I think that's a beautiful thing to use. It's like exploring masculine and feminine energies. In some ways, that has a lot of meaning to me, looking at the 
the different energies and how do they interplay and reclaiming what has society has dismissed to a large degree or even put down. And also there are times when those distinctions have no meaning for me. And it really depends on what perspective I'm in at the moment. And I appreciate the value in all of it. In your book, you say something about, yeah, you said at one of the uh, spiritual retreats, you asked the divine, what is love? And then the answer came to you. (laughs) Talk to me about that moment. Oh, that was (laughs) such an amazing experience. So we were sitting with these different questions like, what is life? What is the purpose of life? What is love? And as I sat with the question, what is love? All of a sudden, my whole attention just zoomed into the inside of my mouth. And it wasn't something I was directing. It's just something that happened. And it was kind of like I was myself with my mouth and also inside my mouth at the same time. And I felt this It was a cross between a feeling and a taste of the sweetest thing I had ever come in contact with. In fact, that's what it was. It tasted so sweet that it was more of a vibration and a feeling than an actual taste, although that's the way the sensation started. It's like it just expanded into my whole mouth. And then the realization hit me nothing was added. This is who I am. And I just burst into tears because it was this sense of love being the sweetest, highest vibration that that expanded through all of my cells. And it's naturally who I am. It's nothing I need to get. Yeah, no achieving, no pursuing, right? Right. Nothing anybody needs to give me. So you wrote the book, The Universe, F-U-C-K-I-N-G, Loves Me. Getting out of your way and into your flow. Two initial questions. How did you become a writer? And what was the main inspiration and intention of writing your book? I've always enjoyed writing and felt like there was a book in me and tried to write a book several times. I've been writing, yeah, I've been writing blogs and things like that, but I tried to do the sit down every morning for a certain amount of time and write, and that just didn't work for me. And I realized that, A, I was working against how I naturally work, which is to dive fully into something. And I was also trying to do it on my own. And the whole book is about being supported. (laughs) And so I hired a coach who was also an editor and then rented an Airbnb, went away by myself and for five days just wrote and meditated, sat in a hot tub ate nourishing foods. And my intention was that if nobody ever read the book, this was going to be an exercise for me in just showing up and being as visible, as vulnerable, as authentic as I could possibly be. And so that's the energy from which I wrote it. And In those five days, I wrote 80% of the book. Wow. Would you say that all sources are the same source? We are talking about the same thing, really? Universe, source, God, divine, all these words? Yes. And I would include in that our own inner knowing, that like the essence of who we are is a part of source, universe, God, all that is. How did you come to realize the trust? How did you come to live it, to finally surrender and let yourself be guided by the universe, as you call it? Well, I played with it in a lot Mm -hmm. of different ways. Like when I was looking, and not really playing with it, but when I was looking at colleges, 
I had no idea how to choose a college and it was before the internet. And so I just had a conversation with God and said, God, I want this to be so clear. Like, I don't know, you know, so just tell me and don't make it subtle, like a ton of bricks kind of knowing, because I don't want to second guess. And on our a college tour my mom took me on. I went to three schools that were just absolutely clearly, I mean, things happened that was just clearly no. Mm. And then I got to one, I walked around and there were piles of bricks everywhere. Mm. And when I went to talk to the advisor, I asked about the bricks and he said, oh, an alum just donated a ton of bricks to the school. (laughs) I was like, Okay, uh, universe. <laughs> right. Is that, Got it. Right. Very clear. It's clear now. <laughs> yes. And it's been for me a deepening process of trusting. So it's like, okay, it was okay. It was easier to trust with decisions like that. When bigger things have happened in my life, right. it has called for deeper levels of trust. And to get to those deeper levels of trust, everything that was in the way of that had to come up, all my fears, all my beliefs about myself, all my limitations had to come up for me to get to that deeper level. Would you say that death, losing the body, losing people we love and losing our own body, Would that be the highest moment of trust? Definitely the death of my daughter was a huge step in deepening this trust and being able to being able to grieve and in my grief find my way back to love and acceptance. And a lot of that actually had to do with being able to love myself and my body because she was born over three weeks, three months early, weighed just over a pound. I'd already had one preemie daughter who doing great. She was born at two pounds and had some initial things, but she did fine. But then this daughter was born with a raging lung infection. I almost died. And I There was a lot for me around forgiving myself, forgiving my body. I felt very betrayed by my body. I felt betrayed by my daughter because during an emergency C-section, she flipped and the, the way the surgery ended up, I couldn't have any more children. And I was really angry with her. I was angry with God, angry with myself, probably more than anything. And that was a a long process of going deeper and deeper with, oh, and here's another piece. Yeah. Yeah. And other things have been big too, like running my own business. There have been times when that has (laughs) taken me deep into all my fears and money issues and am I good enough kinds of things. The question I have for you, it's connected to a section in your book that I have here on grief. You say, today, instead of grief, I feel profound gratitude. Gratitude for the whole experience of her life. And then you said more about gratitude, gratitude for, and then you say, and for how I opening my heart to my grief has opened it to deeper love as well. So you mentioned this earlier, that the greatest insight to have gained, the deepest ones, they came from pain, deep pain. What is your message for those that are grieving at this moment, Sarah? Oh, first of all, I so I feel teary hearing you read that because it has such profound meaning for me. And first of all, huge love to everyone going through this. It can be a really painful, lonely experience. Lonely, right. At at least that's how it feels because 
our society doesn't know how to handle grief. And I certainly wasn't taught. I don't know anybody who was taught how to grieve before coming up to it. And so my thoughts on that for anyone who's experiencing it is first practice kindness to yourself and don't push yourself to try to get through grief. So many of us get the message that, you know, oh, just look on the bright side, be okay. And until you go into the depths, that's inauthentic. It's something each person has to come to on their own. And it's not a goal. It's the natural result of being with the pain, of letting it break us open. Because it's not our hearts that break. It's the beliefs we've had, the clinging we've done and grief of any kind, but especially with a death is a call to let all of that break open and let our hearts break open. It's a return to love, isn't it, Sarah? It absolutely is. And I went through a very challenging situation a couple of years ago, and my mantra was, let me, it's like, okay, life, take everything with this experience that is not serving me because I don't want to do this again. And practice just as much as possible surrendering to it. In your book, you say, going back to the topic of self-love, self-acceptance, you say, for most of us, the biggest challenge is seeing our own beauty and worthness. I now get that feeling different is part of my gifts. So why do you think most of us have this huge issue with loving and accepting ourselves? So one answer to that question is, you know, because of society, because of how we're raised. Right. The deeper answer is that that's what we're here for, to experience that not loving ourselves in order to do the, I don't love calling it work, but I don't have a, to do the process, to do the exploration and the self-reflection to come to self-love. And that it's that experience and process that gets it deeper into our systems so that we're actually living it instead of it just being this mental idea we have. In your book, you talk about the uh, STUFF as an acronym. But before that, you also in the book, you talk about something that caught my attention was the truth at different levels. You say we know truth on different levels. And then you divide the levels of knowing into these three sections. You have the mind, the heart, and the body. So talk to me for a moment about mind knowing, heart knowing, and body knowing. And why do you say that the body is the deepest knowing that there is? Yeah, I, I'm glad you asked about this because I see this so much in my own life and in my work with clients that we can know things on a mental level, like knowing that the square root of four is two, or knowing that the, maybe we know that the chemical symbol for salt is NACL, but it's something we've memorized or, you know, it's just something that We know, but unless you've delved deeply into those areas, it's just something you kind of recite. Yeah, true. And then we know things in our heart, like that we love somebody or that this particular music brings us joy because we feel it in our hearts. And then we can know things in our bodies And when we know it 
when we know something on all three levels, so let me say a little bit more about the body. When we know something in our bodies, we act on it. So like we know in our bodies that ice is cold because we've experienced it. It's not something that somebody taught us in school and we recite. If it's hot outside, we reach for ice. Yeah, true. <laughs> and getting something on all three of these levels, mind, heart, body, is when we act on it consistently. Like I was saying with ice, you don't debate. Yeah. Ooh, should I, is ice going to be really cold this time? You know, you wouldn't take a workshop on right. proving that ice is cold. <laughs> yes, like, right. Well, <laughs> duh. But when we worry about something, like, am I really going to be okay in this situation? It's because we don't know deeply on all our levels that we're going to be okay. Yeah. And this yeah. <laughs> experiment, experience of being in a body, having life here on earth, is a process of experiencing and deepening the knowings. I'm thinking about the when we talk, you talk about the universe, the spiritual world, and trusting and knowing that in a way that's interesting because it's a knowing, but that requires trust and surrender. Right, Sarah? Yeah, so it's kind of a feedback loop. The more you trust, the more you experience and have it deepen. So then you can trust more and get the deeper experience. And when I first started on the spiritual consciousness paths and a lot of different healing communities, there was a lot of emphasis on if you're familiar with the chakra system, the yes. yeah. upper, like from heart up, yeah. heart up to head, mm -hmm. it always felt to me like there was something missing. And especially in the last five to 10 years, I've been exploring more and more this whole sense of being embodied because the emphasis was on getting enlightened, but something wasn't connecting for me. And it was when I flipped it around and I started exploring people who were talking about being embodied that things really clicked. And now I'm focusing on going deeper in order to go higher. Mm which cuts out the spiritual bypassing, the emotional bypassing, and feels so much more authentic and vulnerable and real to me. Yeah, you're knowing, and that's what it is. Yeah, I love that, how clear you are, Sarah. I can hear in your voice. Thank you. Yeah, and that really comes from being more and more embodied because our bodies are a connection to our authentic power, our authentic knowing, our groundedness, our experience comes through mm -hmm. being embodied. You are the president and founder of Refuture Your Life. Talk to me about it, the company, and also the uh, refuturing process. So Refuture Your Life, the name comes from the fact that even when we make little changes today, it puts us on a different trajectory so that we really are changing the path that we're on and that we have that ability to do that. The refuturing process continues to evolve as I <laughs> explore and learn more myself, experience more myself. But what it really is about is this going in deeper, being with what is, and then 
being with the greater possibilities of what can happen next. So the refuturing statements that you mentioned earlier all start out with what if it's possible. There was actually a study done in Canada that using straight affirmations can do more harm than good for a lot of people because it sets up an inner struggle. If you say, I am wealthy, then part of you may come in and go, uh, have you checked the bank account? <laughs> you remember <laughs> these bills that are due <laughs> because it's too far off from the current reality. The people have had luck with just sticking with the same affirmation over and over so that that stuff can work out. But what I have found even more effective is to say, what if it's possible that I am wealthy? The phrase, what if it's possible, moves us into a space of curiosity and expansion mm -hmm. and moves us out of our head and more into our hearts and to our bodies. And then from that, so when I'm working with clients, I would go through a whole process of being with what's present for them, going into their emotions and into their deeper wisdom because I'm constantly guiding them to connect more with themselves right. Right. and finding their wisdom. And then I'll lead them through a series of refuturing statements. These just come to me. They're nothing I plan. And they guide people into this bigger space for themselves. Then from that, we co-create a choose statement. So it's like you go from the expansion of what if it's possible and then down into the focus and practicality of I choose. Nice. Mm -hmm. So it may be a whole series around money and what if it's possible that I am wealthy and then I choose to trust in my abundance and to take my next step. When I was reading the statements, uh, what if, it was lighter. It's, it's this space of, of light in the sense of being lighter and imagination. Do you connect imagination to intuition? Because in my case, it often happens. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And one of the things that focusing on the heart up has done is been to separate us from our true desires and our grounded imagination. Yeah. When we're in our bodies, our desires lead us to what's next, that we're working from our, our essence. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not a head wanting like, I want a million dollars because then I'll feel fulfilled. It's more of a soul calling and grounded imagination comes from that same inner knowing. What if all of us got there? Can you imagine what it would look like? Earth would be paradise like it, right, Sarah? Kind of the heaven idea. Oh, absolutely. And that's my goal. <laughs> Isn't it? Wow, I, beautiful. Yeah. I just led an online retreat called Embody Your Awesome. And that's really what my work is about is it's so much fun to be and live from the greatness we already are rather than trying to get to some place or trying to be great because we're not recognizing our own greatness. You say in a book, the most powerful, freeing thing you can do is to let yourself get uncomfortable and feel. S-T-U-F-F -F stands for stuck thoughts, unresolved feelings and fears. Wow, fear is a big one, isn't it? <laughs> Can we one day become fearless? Is that really possible to live without fear? That's not a goal of mine right. because fear is 
really about doing something new and different. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and I always want to be doing something new and different, something more expanded. What I love is that the more I have done this, the more I see fear as a signal, like a signpost of here is where there is some really rich stuff for you. So I seek out things that I that scare me. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> the more I have done this, the more I can breathe into the fear and find out what is scaring me about this? What is the message of this fear? Because fear is always grounded in love. Mm, When we stop at the fear and fight the fear or judge it, struggle against it, we never get to the love that's beneath it. By embracing our fear, we get to the love and then we get the experience of bringing the fear with us and doing the thing. So let me ask you this question, perhaps to clarify in my own mind. Uh, what is another word for fear, Sarah? What comes to mind? Mm. <laughs> Excitement. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Signal. Opportunity. Yeah. Wow. A transformed way to see fear. I love that. Thank you so much, Sarah, for, I mean, everything is just incredible. I love everything about you. You're just so light, <laughs> so expensive. Yeah, that's the word. It's really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Valeria. I have really been looking forward to this conversation with you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, me too. I was um, reading about you. I usually try not to read too much about my guests or know too much about them. So we can just explore the, is this energy? So I like feeling, so I can feel the energies. Your book is very rich and I made so many points here that we won't be able to go through because of the time. And also, you know, that's, we want to leave a little bit for the audience. <laughs> and you have the refuturing statements throughout the book. And I love the ending ones too. You talk about a concept called safety self. And then there's a chapter where you talk about Uh, it's not about the lessons, which kind of surprised me. <laughs> And you talk about the three C's, beautiful, which I'm not going to disclose it. And then I love the way you have a section about the three keys to dancing with the universe. And, well, it's so much more. <laughs> I can go on and on. So we are almost at the end. I have these uh, ending questions for you. But before I ask them, would you like to add anything or read a passage in your book? Oh, I had not prepared one. You know, I would like to say some of the refuturing statements. Yes, yes. And I just opened the book to a page that has some on it, and I'm going to read those. Yes, please. So I recommend that people either put their hands on their heart center in the middle of their chest or just sit back relaxed, palms up, You're not trying to process these statements. You're just letting them wash over you. What if it's possible that it's okay for me to feel nervous or even scared? What if it's possible that feeling nervous and scared doesn't mean something's wrong? What if it's possible that feeling nervous and scared means I'm doing something new and that that's okay? What if it's possible that it's okay for me to breathe and relax? What if it's possible that this can work? What if it's possible that I'm ready even if I don't feel like I am? I choose to feel my feelings, hear my safety self, and take my next step. That's wonderful. Wow. It's... um. That's amazing how I visualize some people in my family listening to this. 
no, I have to bring it to them. <laughs> um, I mean, everyone is here, my whole audience, which I'll have on my website too. I just kind of imagined this being on the first page of the Fit for Joy, those statements, you're reading them and then beautiful video. Okay, we'll get there <laughs> because <laughs> yes, that would be wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. There's a, yeah, there's a link in the book to download an audio of me saying some of the refuturing steps, oh, okay. statements. Yes. So I'll have the website link on your podcast profile. So my ending questions, if you knew you would die soon, meaning leave in the body, would you make any change or do anything in a different way? I would do even more of these. I'm doing so many things that I love and I would just look to see if there's anything I am not loving mm -hmm. that I'm doing. And take those out and put in even more of the others. My last question is, what are three things about life that you know for sure as of this moment? I love that you say as of this moment. Yes. That's great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> as of now. What I know about life, that life is happening for me and for my deepening experience and understanding I know that life is the most joyful for me when I'm being my most authentic, including crying my authentic tears. I know that life is a dance and that when I hold it with love and playfulness and curiosity, I'm a much better dance partner. Thank you so much. That was three. Gosh, I just got really um, in the moment and kind of floating around the room, <laughs> uh, listening to you. <laughs> Thank you so much again for your beautiful light. Uh, I call it divine presence and this timeless wisdom that you share, this deeper knowing that is there and everything else in between that the body can feel. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Valeria. And before we say goodbye, where can we find more information about you, your books, products, services, and future projects? My website is refutureyourlife.com. You can also go to the universe, F-C-K-I-N-G, lovesme.com. And you can order the book from independent booksellers, from Amazon, there are some in some stores. It's all on the website. And I also have a deck of cards. Each card has a refuturing statement and a choose statement. And then a journal that helps you apply all of this. Because as I said, I'm very into the practical applications. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the journal helps you apply all of this. I'll have those links on your podcast profile too. And of course, I'll be sharing your message in different ways. Uh, happily. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Sarah Airy and her work, please visit refutureyourlife.com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now. <laughs>